Good Wednesday morning, friends, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever you may happen to join. For those that I may not know, I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville. And at least here in Kirksville, it is a beautiful fall day. There's a little bit of wind, as you can hear, but it is a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's not too cold. It's crisp. And although most of our leaves have blown away behind me in Detweiler Park, there, there are a few still beautiful leaves. They're just right on the edge of turning brown and falling down, but they're still there. And I'm enjoying that with you today. Um, this is our time that we take in the middle of the week, each and every week to pause together and to wonder together about how and where God is meeting us, um, where we're seeing God at work in our world, where God is stirring in our hearts and our minds together and in our communities. Um, I've come, as I've shared before, to sh cherish this time, not simply because I enjoy sharing it with you, and I do, but also because it has become an important part of my own spiritual practices to ask myself that question each week. And uh, I hope and pray it has been for you as well. And I mentioned last week that in these next few weeks, I, we're going to be exploring some of the ways in which we practice spiritual disciplines, maybe in some unusual ways, that ways that we don't think about as necessarily falling into a list of prayer and Bible study and worship together. Those are all important ways that God meets us. But we are going to explore a few ways that might seem outside the box to some of us. I was having this discussion with some students, our college students, the other night as we talked about the spiritual habits and practices in, in their lives and in our faith tradition. And I, we were talking about nature, that for many of us, not all of us, but many of us, we reliably connect to God through nature. For me, many of you know, that is often hiking outside or running outside. Um, and this is a beautiful time of year to do that when the leaves are off the trees and you can crunch through leaves on the ground on a hike and you, you don't have to worry about ticks or those kind of things. Although, um, at least if I'm out hiking on the trails this time of year, I'm usually wearing blaze orange just to be on the safe side during hunting season. But I had shared with one of our students that um, I was nursing a, an ongoing little nagging running injury on my Achilles and wasn't able to do running right now and wasn't able to as easily as able to hike as I normally am and that that was making it harder for me to connect with God because the things that I do outside are less are harder at the moment and I'm less likely to do them and the student didn't miss a beat and looked at me and said well you know if you want to be outside, what if you just go to Thousand Hills and swing? Now to some of us that might sound like a completely silly suggestion, but God met me in that because actually I enjoy swinging. And it's the kind of thing that we as adults often think, oh, that's just for kids. But this student embodied God to me because they were willing to say, hey, I know that you connect with God outside. What about this? And they were right. They were absolutely right. There is a delight in swinging even as an adult and seeing nature around us and feeling the wind that uh, is just a beautiful thing. And if you're outside, you can also hear the church bells, which I'm appreciating. So today I'm coming to you from our children's playground out here at our church. Um, partly, uh, I didn't have time to head to a different park today. And I know in the past I have joined you from the swings and have shared about swinging. Uh, but I thought I would share this today as a reminder that sometimes our spiritual practices are not the things we would normally think about. And some seasons we need to change it up a little bit and allow God to meet us in those surprising ways. So if you see me, I probably won't be doing it on this playground because it's designed specifically for our children. Uh, but if you see me out at Thousand Hills swinging, know that I haven't gone off my rocker. I'm just enjoying the, a new way to connect with God. 
And I got to thinking about that, about the ways that we as adults sometimes are afraid to do the things that allow us to connect with God because we're afraid someone might judge us or we're afraid that that's not adult-like. And it reminded me of a poem that I hadn't looked at for a long time and I thought I would share it with you. It's an older poem. It's from a book called Reaching for Rainbows by Anne Weems. It's, this is a book that was published, I think, in the 80s or early 90s. So it's been around a while and yet, and yet it's got some wisdom I thought I would share with us. It's called Balloons Belong in Church. I took to church one morning a happy four-year-old boy holding a bright blue string to which was attached his much loved orange balloon with pink stripes. Certainly a thing of beauty, and if not forever, at least a joy for a very important now. When later he met me at the door, clutching the blue string, orange and pink bobbing behind him, he didn't have to tell me something had gone wrong. What's the matter? I said, he wouldn't tell me. I bet they loved your balloon. Out it came then, mocking the teacher's voice. We don't bring balloons to church. Then that little four-year-old, his lip a bit trembly, asked, why aren't balloons allowed in church? I thought God would like balloons. And it goes on to say, I celebrate balloons, parades, and chocolate chip cookies. I celebrate seashells and elephants and lions that roar. I celebrate roasted marshmallows and chocolate cake and fresh fish. I celebrate aromas, bread baking, mincemeat, lemons. I celebrate seeing bright colors, wheat in a field, wildflowers. I celebrate hearing waves pounding, rain falling, soft voices. I celebrate touching toes in the sand, a, kitchen, a kitten furs, another person. I celebrate the sun that shines slap dab in our faces. I celebrate snow falling, the wondrous quiet of the snow falling. I celebrate the crashing thunder and the brazing lightning. And I celebrate the green of the world, the life giving green, the hope giving green. I celebrate birth, the wonder, the miracle of that tiny life already asserting its selfhood. I celebrate children who laugh out loud, who walk in the mud and dawdle in puddles, who put chocolate fingers everywhere, who like to be tickled, who scribble in church, who whisper in loud voices, who sing in louder voices, who run and laugh when they fall, who cry at the top of their lungs, who cover themselves with band-aids, who squeeze the toothpaste all over the bathroom, who slurp their soup, who chew cough drops, who ask questions. I celebrate children who are so busy living they don't have time for our hang-ups and I celebrate who are adults who are as little children. I love that line. I celebrate adults who are as little children. I celebrate the person who breaks up the meaningless routines of life, the person who stops to reflect, to question, to doubt, the person who isn't afraid to feel, the person who refuses to play the game. I celebrate anger at injustice. I celebrate tears for the mistreated, the hurt, the lonely. I celebrate the community that cares, the church. I celebrate the church. I celebrate the times when we in the church made it, when we answered a cry, when we held to our warm and well-fed bodies a cold and lonely world. I celebrate the times when God let, when we let God through our hiding places, through the maze of our meetings, our pleasant facade, deep down to our selfhood, deep down to where we really are. Call it a heart, soul, naked self. It's where we hide deep down away from God and away from each other. I celebrate the times when the church is the church, when we are Christians, when we are living, loving, contributing. God's children, I celebrate we are called God's children even when we are hiding. I celebrate love, the moments when the you is more important than the I. I celebrate perfect love, the cross, the Christ, loving in spite of giving without reward. I celebrate the music within a person that must be heard. I celebrate life that we may live more abundantly. Where did we get the idea that balloons don't belong in church? When did we get the idea that God says gray and shh and drab and anything will do? I think it's blasphemy not to appreciate the joy in God's world. I think it's blasphemy not to bring our joy into God's church for God so loved the world that Christ hung there loving the unlovable. What a beautiful gift cannot be offered unto the Lord, whether it's a balloon or a song or some joy that sits within you waiting to have the lid taken off. The scriptures say there's a time to laugh and a time to weep. It's not hard to see the reasons for crying in a world where hatred for others is so manifest. But it's also not hard to see the reasons for laughter in a world where God's love is so manifest. So celebrate. 
bring your balloons and your butterflies and your bouquets of flowers bring the torches and hold them high dance your dances paint your feelings sing your songs whistle and laugh life is a celebration and affirmation of god's love life is distributing more balloons for god so loved the world surely that's a cause for joy surely we celebrate good news that god should love us that much where did we ever get the idea that balloons don't belong in church or I might add, where do we ever get the idea as adults that God can't meet us on a swing or in the smell of cooking or in the delight of crunching leaves? Friends, God has met me in this, in this moment, in this time and sharing that with you. And in the reminder that as much as going, is going on in our world, some kind of God does meet us in things like this. So I hope and pray that as we head in and through this week, that you find a way to connect with God, even if it's one of those ways that the rest of the world might find absolutely silly. For God does not find it silly. In fact, God meets us exactly where we are as individuals and also as a community. For though I am outside the church building right now, this poem just doesn't just refer to what happens in a church building. Balloons belong in church is the sense that that delight, that bringing our full selves to who we are is part of what we do in community wherever we are. So I hope that you find that some of that delight this week. And if you have those moments, please uh, let us know, share with us. I would love to hear the ways that God is meeting you in those unexpected places. Go in peace, my friends.